Okay, so we're going to um, bounce into our first exercise. But before we go any further, um, does anyone have any general questions about algorithms and how they relate to uh, Grasshopper? All right. Um, let's go ahead then and um, open up Rhino if you don't already have it open. And go ahead and type in Grasshopper. We're going to be working with version 0914. So if you don't have that version, uh, make sure that you go to the Grasshopper website and download the corresponding one. And if you have any troubles, feel free to write a message, write us a message in the questions window. Okay, um, so with that, um, if we've got Grasshopper successfully loaded, right, um, we can go ahead and start to uh, develop our own algorithms. So let's take a second here just so that we're uh, comfortable with um, uh, working with Grasshopper, and let's actually build the line, right? So if I have two point uh, containers that are found under the params geometry tab, if I have two of these, if I copy and paste this one, now I have two. This is going to be my point A, and this is going to be my point B. All right? So I'm also going to create two points in the Rhino environment. So I'm going to create two points. Go ahead and right-click the first point object, set one point. And do the same for the second one, set one point. Okay, and now we want to create a line, and that's our, that's our algorithm, right? So let's go to the Curve tab, and under the Primitive sub-tab, we'll grab the line by two points object. Let's drop that into the, onto the canvas, and we can go ahead and connect point A and point B, and now we have a line. Okay, so again, you've, um, you've created your first algorithm if you're new to Grasshopper. Um, so and I'm going to go ahead and grab a panel to show the result of that algorithm. So we can see that the output here is a line and it also tells us that the length is 8.31 inches in my case. Okay, so um, here's the input. Here's our algorithm to create a line. And here is our output, or at least a representation of our output. It says line. So, um, the nice thing about Grasshopper is that if we're moving our points around, right, anything changing to the inputs redefines this object so it updates. And Grasshopper is light and nimble, so the up update is quick, right? And it, do it doesn't necessarily, um, uh, we're not as kind of designers and visual people and ready to move on to the next steps to developing our design. Um, we might not uh, think about what is actually happening here in the back end. So Grasshopper is solving the calculation of the line every time anything changes, right? Nothing's changing right now, so it's not computing. But the minute I make a change, it updates live, right? Okay, so this is uh, something we want to be uh, thinking about as we talk about how we build up and structure our algorithms. Okay. So back to the, uh, the conversation about the first exercise. We're going to create a spiral that's going to be defined by an expression. So we're going to use a predefined algorithm to create our spiral. Right? So in the end, we're going to get something like this. We're not only going to draw a curve that defines uh, a spiral shape, but we're also going to create a series of circles that are um, located on that spiral curve. Okay, so let's say that I wanted to draw a spiral. Um, a spiral is, you know, uh, you know, phyllotaxis, phyllotaxis systems, um, nautilus shells, things like that are all um, can be spirals can be found in those systems. So let's say I was inspired by those, and I wanted to find out more about spirals. All I really have to do is look up the function that helps me define my spiral shape. And a function is just a relation that associates members of one set to another set. So if we have here a simple expression, x equals the cosine of x times, sorry, 
x equals the cosine of t times t, right? That is an expression that relates these elements on the right to this element on the left. So x is going to be defined by this thing. Right? That might um, seem like a long-winded way to talk about just a simple equation, right? But it's important that we understand that it is a function, right? Uh, at the, the more macro level. Correspondingly, to create our spiral, or the points for our spiral, the y position would be defined by sine of t times t. Okay, so here's a representation, another representation of a spiral, right? And we're going to have, a, uh, if we kind of identify with the elements that we have going on here in our spiral, there's a kind of central focus point, and then we're going to have a series of positions as defined, moving counterclockwise, around the center point with an increasing length as we move along. Right? So what this means is that each one of these, if these are points, we're going to have a single center, but we're going to have multiple points around the outside that help us define our spiral. So in order to work with multiple things, we're going to review what lists are. In Grasshopper, lists are collections of things. So it's very easy to draw two points and define a line. It's a single result from two inputs. What happens if you want to create multiple uh, lines or create multiple points? Right? We have to understand that we're working with lists. And each thing that is in the list is stored with a particular location, or, or it is located in a particular order in the collection of things. And that order is denoted by the index value. So here we have uh, one example of how we might create multiple points. Right? divide a curve into points, the output here, as a result, is going to be a list of points in which each one is um, identified relative to an index, and the collection of points are understood as each one being an item, and the entirety of it being understood as a list. Okay, so we're going to create some lists using a series object, and that creates a sequence of numbers that are spaced according to a step value. Great. So let's go ahead and let's create our spiral. So if we go into uh, back into Ryan Grasshopper, um, we don't need this anymore. Um, just to give you a quick peek at um, the reference files that we gave you, um, you can open these as we go along. Uh, we're going to be building them all together. Uh, so you'll have both these original set of um, of files as well as the files that we create together as references because along the way we may do something slightly different. So the first file that we're going to open up it is 1-0 spiral by expression. This is all we're going to try and achieve which is to use a predefined algorithm that's spiraling uh, by sine x sub x and cosine x sub x uh, to create a spiral. And in this approach we're going to process the algorithm which is create the spiral all at once, right? Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and work from this file for the first exercise. So I'm going to save this as dash w. That's my working file so that um, we'll have a separate version for uh, to share with you after the end of the webinar. Right, and um, I'm going to go ahead and delete all of the objects below my panels here. So I have the same information but we're going to do this from scratch. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is to create a spiral, we need to define point positions, right? And in order to create multiple points, we said we were going to use a series object. That's going to be found under the sets tab, sequence, series, right? So if I zoom in on this object, you can see the icon is uh, identifying moving from 0, 1, 2, etc. to infinity. And the way we're going to define the inputs is first we have to define the first number in the series and then the step size for each incremental number and then lastly how many values there will be in the series. So we need a couple of sliders. Uh, the first one being the step size. So let's go to the params tab under input and grab a number slider and we're going to use this to define our step. So I'm going to right click and redefine the name so that I have um, my slider named. Connect this to N. 
And now it's going to start at zero, which you can see would be the uh, default value. It's going to step incrementally 0.25 units. And I'm going to end up with 10 of them right now. All right? So let's grab a panel and let's see what we get as an output. All right? So since there are some default values, our series object, if I group it and label it so that you all can uh, see that this is a series object, the series is going to give us um, corresponding values here based on the default values for S and C and the value I defined here for N. Um, so I want to control how many there are. I don't want just the default number of 10. So let's go ahead and create another slide. And I'm going to use the shortcut, shortcut by double-clicking on the canvas. And I'm going to say I want at least one. I want it to be less than the current value, which will start at 25. And I want to have up to 100 values. So one less than 25, less than 100. Hit Enter. This is going to be my C value. And this is going to be the number of values I want. So I'm going to redefine the name of my slide. Okay, so now our list keeps growing um, with the same step size until we reach 25 values. Great. So here we have our list of values. Here is my index, which always starts at zero and increments one at a time. And here is my current value or my data item. Perfect.